The Crosby Comets were founded in 1987, boasting a talented cast of playmakers that garnered early success in the 1990s state championship. However, that success would come at a cost as Crosby would not return to the summit for more than two decades. Six times in seven years, the Comets finished second to the Minot Oilers. The struggles would mount in the coming years. Well, I've been told that we haven't had a very good hockey program like all, every year. Some years we're good, some years we don't win a game. I knew coming into my freshman year, our team hadn't won a game in like three or four years. Still, freshman year, we went like 0 and 20 probably, and then sophomore year we won our first game in about four or five years. But I guess the first couple of years of Pee Wee's, I don't think we won too many games then. In the early winter of 2011, a talented senior class looked to end years of frustration and failures. The quest would require a unique bond of brotherhood. The group of kids from last year were, I don't want to say they're a special group, but they are. They, you know, you get a group of kids that play together for, for so many years and they just not, there isn't, you know, uh, you know I, don't, I don't like the guy in school. I don't like him anywhere else playing hockey together. It's a different story. Hockey's a, it's a family sport, and the guys are all brothers. And last year they were, every one of them was a brother. They did everything together. Go to someone's house, watch hockey, eat spaghetti. <laughs> well, I guess when I was like a fifth grader, so I was told that when I was a junior and Alex and PJ and Lad were seniors that we were going to have a good team and we'd have a chance to do something special then and then. It's my eighth grade year when I started playing junior goal hockey. We were, I was splitting time with another goalie, and Alex and Lad and PJ and Trevor were kind of the leaders of the hockey team as freshmen, and I guess that's kind of when I knew we had something special going into the future. The success of the regular season translated into a bye in the number one overall seed in the state tournament. In the semifinals, the Comets steamrolled rival Watford City en route to the championship game. And Dave and I always talk before a game, you know, they look ready. So, you know, we were out standing on the glass watching another game, and he'd come out and he goes, what do you think? And I said, Phew. I said, I don't think I've ever seen him this way before. Langdon, puck one back by Crosby, great centering pass, shot, top shelf for the goal! Player. Silvaria gets around two men, Silvaria! Lights the lamp, the score by P.J. Silvaria. Pump it in long, played off the back wall, hard shot, a score, T.J. McMahon. They were pretty, uh, pretty mindset, they were going out to, uh, to win a hockey game. by the Comets, as Crosby tallies another 9-2. They were on the preface of ending a 22-year title drought, but with heavy expectations came heavy burdens. When I found out we were drawing Grand Forks, and I just kind of went, oh, man. Right after the game, we were all getting ready for tomorrow, getting ready for the championship game. We knew it was going to be the biggest game ever. Uh, well, just like before the Watford City game, it was at a point where I'd never seen the boys that way before. They were all nervous. That's how tell them that's when my nerves really started kicked in and started focusing. I remember I was off to the right of everyone, and I was just sitting there, and. I was just uh, looking at the ice, just kind of thinking about it. I was going through things in my head, you know, in certain situations, what I'm going to do, and all that kind of stuff, visualizing everything. And Lad came up to me and bent down and talked to me for a minute. And yes, that was kind of about what I remember about starting lineup. The Comets found themselves overmatched for much of the contest against the reigning champion Stallions from Grand Fork. That's his second of the game. Top shelf on Lance Knutson. It's definitely tough going into the third period down two goals. One goal is all right, but two goals definitely it's so hard to come back from two goal deficit. Uh, at least there wasn't really a panic, which I guess was I was kind of surprised about. There wasn't any panicking going on. There wasn't a, there wasn't any yelling going on. There was just kind of a you know we gotta we gotta do this. So just you know, get some bucks in the net. We gotta get something going. I guess I don't even know if we knew exactly what that meant. I could just remember the, the look on Dave's face and I mean going into the locker room at the third period and coming out and I remember walking out on the ice and Dave goes, gosh, we really got to get some stuff going here. And I said, yeah, I said, we got 20 minutes to do it. And I said, if we don't do it then, I said, we got to figure out what we're going to tell these group of boys that have worked their butts off for us all season that we're going home in second place. And 
trailing 2-0 late past the midway point in the third period. What ensued will forever leave its mark. Coming up with the puck is Obregon. Again, out in front. Puck is loose. Up the defender and in. The goal is credited to Will Lansford. When they first, when they when we scored our first goal, I mean it was it was like we'd won the game. It just took us a while to, to put the puck on Grand Force's goalie. Although they had brought themselves within a goal, the Comets' efforts to tie the score were turned back by the Stallions' netminder. With an empty net, Crosby would catch a timely break when an ill-fated shot attempt by Grand Forks in the final moments would be called back for an icing. I got pulled and I was sitting there on the bench and uh, I took, put my helmet up and I just, I just started praying. I guess more than anything, I, I, I kind of quit watching for a little bit. Because we pulled Lance, he was on the bench, and we got that icing because they shot for the empty netter. Well, as their even strength still technically, you know, it calls as an icing. So it was, I think when Dave took his time out, and we just kind of, we put our guys out that we, we put our power play out, and how we would set anything else up, and we just stressed that we need the face off. Everyone from that last shift still on the ice. The senior Silvaria, biggest face off of the game. It's collected. Lansford fires it on. Nothing there. In front. And it's a goal! Crosby ties it up with 12.8 seconds left. We are not done yet here at the Dakota Spirit Arena. The odds of that happening are. You could. You could do it a hundred times and maybe do it once or twice, and the, it was just one of those times where it was that one time. The tying goal would delay the outcome for an additional three periods of overtime. That is when history, for the many who call Crosby home, was rewritten. Here comes Desjardins. He's not seeing a step slower. He goes top shot! The gloves go flying, the sticks are in the air! Crosby! Their first state championship since 1990. They take down the 2011 champion, Grand Forks Stallions. We talked about Desjardins. I never saw the puck going in here. To be honest, the only part I saw was I saw the water bottle go flying. And I knew it went in the net because that's the only time that that thing goes anywhere. I was just thinking, did that really just happen when I turned around and I seen Lad coming at me? For the captain, winning the title in his final game wearing a Comets uniform resonated deeply. Yeah, a lot of it. My grandpa, definitely, he came up to the rink with me all the time and bring me to practice. I lived across town. Me and him would walk across town. He'd bring me to practice. It was good. He really motivated me to keep playing. Well, yeah, he was there, but just a couple weeks after season, he passed away. It was just good to have him there. As for the puck that changed the history of Comets hockey, it does not reside in a trophy case or even the home of the humble man who scored the defining goal. Oh, I actually gave that to a little kid that came up and asked for me at, uh, on the ice. Do you remember who the kid was? Or? Yep. Do you want to share that? Yes. Yeah, Story. Tate, Tate Haugano, I think his last name, came out to me at the end of the game and asked if he'd have the puck, so I gave him the puck. <laughs>